Hello guys, welcome to our new video. In this video, we are going to learn about integration in SAP Hybris. So I have prepared a notes, which I will provide the link of this note in the description of this video. So you can check it out. So let's see what is the integration in SAP Hybris. Okay, so in SAP Hybris integration is a process of connecting various system and application with the SAP Hybris platform to enable the data exchange and functionality shared between them. So by the definition, you can understand that it is a process of uh, exchanging the data from one system to another system. Okay, so let's take a use case. So um, at the end of this video, you will be more clear about the what is the integration and what is why we use to why we need an integration and what is the integration object and many more so let's see the use case so uh, here i have prepared one use case what we will do we will be creating the integration object for uh, uh, for inbound yts document so this will be our integration object name in order to populate yts document model so if you have watched my previous video so there we have created a model which is named as yts document okay there we have the attributes like code a doc name keyword url doc type language visibility and document age so the, uh, uh, this attributes if i open this model uh, in the back office so here you can see the data are populated. So this data we have populated through the back office. Okay, or else you can populate through the impex. So suppose if I tells that this YTS document table uh, data, there is the n number of data present in any other system apart from hybrid system. There, uh, there uh, it is present in other system. So we want to map that data to our hybrid system. We want to um, bring all that data to our hybrid system so how we can achieve that so we can achieve this through integration so what we can do we will, we can create the integration object for that table uh, which is in our case it is yts document so and we will map the attribute which we need to populate in our hybrid system so let's see how to uh, do that so you can follow these notes uh, in order to create the integration object and test your integration object API. So in order to create an integration object, so go to the back office, then click on this administration cockpit and click on integration UI tool. So once you go to integration UI tool, so here you can see integration object modeling is there. So click on this, click on this plus icon. So once you click uh, on the plus icon it will ask you to create your integration object so we will be creating the integration object for our table that is yts document so as you know our table name is yts document so we will keep the name as inbound yts document so why i am providing here inbound yts document because the request will come from uh, any other system to our hybrid system so that uh, process we call as inbound so suppose if you are sharing some data from your hybrid system to other system so that will be the outbound okay so integration object type is of two, uh, two type basically uh, one is inbound and another is outbound so as we are uh, getting the data from another uh, system to our hybrid system so it, this will be an inbound object okay so if it is an inbound object you have to provide the name as inbound then your table name so that's why I keep the name as inbound YTS document. Okay, then in the root type, you have to select your table. So our table name is YTS document, right? So you can paste your table name here and it will show you in the suggestion. So click on that YTS document. And as I already mentioned, our integration type will be inbound. So click on inbound and click on create. So this will create our integration object. So you can see all the attribute name has been listed here. So whatever uh, attribute is present in our YTS document table. Okay. So now we have to map our attribute. Okay. For which all attribute you require uh, um, required to map in your hybrid system from other system to hybrid system. So we will select that all attribute. 
so here you can see code is by default selected because uh, if you see uh, in our um, code base so here if you see code is the unique value and it is the mandatory attribute so it is by default selected and unique is true so if uh, uh, you want any unique value for your request for that attribute you can check this unique value and if you want and uh, if you check this auto create so that, suppose there is a doc type right so if you check the doc type auto create okay so here if you go to the your table so here you can see what is the doc type doc type is the enum okay so we have created the enum so here the predefined values are there so if we are getting the value uh, like png or this all value which is present in our uh, enumeration table so if that value is coming then it will map that value or else suppose uh, any value we are receiving from uh, other system which is not present in our hybrid system suppose uh, here we receive uh, any value uh, like as any other attribute like uh, uh, excel uh, um, xml or any other uh, doc type so if that is not present in this table so what it will do if you select the auto create as uh, if you select uh, tick this auto create then it will create that enum type in our hybrid system okay so that is the use of the auto create so for our use case we will not using this so um, we will be unchecking this so let's map our attribute so we know creation time uh, and modified time will be auto created so we don't require this so when the entry will be created in our model so this uh, field will all auto populated so we require the doc name we require the doc type and you know document age will be also auto populated because uh, if you go to your model um, here document is of persistent type as uh, its type is persistent type is dynamic so it will be auto populated so we don't record the document age also and for now we will be not using the keyword also because in next video i am going to explain about the persistent hook so there i will use the keyword so for now we am not selecting the keyword so i will select the language and modified time i have already told that it will be pre -pop, uh, it will be populated at the time of um, entry has been created in the model and i will select url and visibility and once you uh, done with your uh, attribute mapping then click on save so it and uh, our attribute is been saved in our uh, integration object model so now what we, uh, we can test our api so before testing this api okay so we will be creating the auth for this integration object so how we can create the uh, auth for this uh, integration object you can go to integration api and here in authentication you can click on authentication and then click on this plus icon so and here you have to give your integration object name so our integration object has been listed here you can see it is inbound vital document this we have created and we will select the authentication type as basic click on finish so now our uh, integration object authentication is also completed uh, authentication configuration is also con completed now as we don't have any uh, third party system like uh, cpi or any other uh, system from where we can fetch all the data and map to our hybrid system so we will be using the postman in order to test our integration object integration api we will be using the postman in order to test our integration api so open the postman click on this plus icon so now let's see how to get the api our integration object api okay so click on that integration object module and from the drop down if you're not getting your integration object if from this drop down you can get your integration object and then if you click on the metadata view metadata so this is the impact suppose in in uh, means in a, a higher environment if you want to um, create the integration object if you don't want to create it manually you can um, import this impact so this uh, integration object will be created in other system also with the same configuration 
and if you go to edmx so here in the service path you can see the api is there okay so you have to copy this api so this is only our integration object api so go back to your postman and paste your integration object api here and here you have to provide your host name so you know our host name is localhost colon 9002 copy this and paste it over here okay now we require the metadata uh, so basically this value will be your um, model name okay so basically our model name is yts document so you can uh, so it will be a yts documents so always at last s has been apparent so it will be uh, the, your metadata will be something like this document at last it will append the s so always this will be uh, means in this way you can uh, map the, your metadata value or else you can revalidate uh, it from any other way suppose you are not confident enough on your metadata value so how you can uh, get your metadata value so i will tell here so you can remove this metadata um, dollar metadata slash dollar metadata you can remove this keep up to your inbound vital document uh, means your uh, integration object model name then here you have to select the get then as we have given the authentication so you, you know we have provided the basic or so click on authentication and select basic or and here you have to provide the credentials so basically it is the back office credential only so in our case it is admin and lambda so provide that credential and click on send so if you see here the title is there so here uh, your table name is coming right so in, uh, inside your in the collection uh, after your table name here the title has been there so this is your metadata name so you can see uh, our table name is vital document but in this case our title is s so uh, at last uh, the s has been append so it is vital documents so you have to always you can copy the name it from here and instead of dollar metadata you can paste that name here and now um, in order to create your object I mean say, uh, uh, your object data uh, it will be a post request so select the post and then click on body then click on raw and click, select here json and here you have to provide the data which you want to map to your yts document okay so how you can get the sample json that will also i so um so you can get the sample json from uh, open your integration object module open your uh, integration object uh, model so in our case it is yts inbound yts document then click on the met, uh, view metadata then click on json so here you can see the sample json is been provided you can copy this sample json and in body you can paste this okay so as this is sample json so we we have to modify the value here okay so you know what will be the doc type so we can copy the value from the doc type enum so i will provide this as pdf you uh, here the i will provide the url as www your sunmay dot in and here you have to provide the code so i will provide test one two three four and language is also enum i can get the language value from the enum type so i will provide this as english the document name let it will be the test doc name this is the localized value so now when i will hit this api this value will be mapped to our yts document table so let's see so you can see it has been created 
so this value has been map mapped to our yts document table so if you go back to your yts document table go to administration config and if i refresh it so you can see test one two three four this entry has been created whatever value you have provided in this json that has been created so in this way integration uh, um, object has been working okay so one more thing to mention here so if you go back to the notes so suppose in case your api get failed integration api get failed due to some uh, wrong mapping or something so how you can monitor that so you can come to integration ui tool then here the monitor monitoring tab is there so click on this monitoring tab then click on inbound okay so here you can see the no record has been present because uh, in order to monitor the api you have to enable one attribute so one property you have to enable mm. so here the property i have mentioned you can see enable the below property from hsc in order to monitor the integration api so copy this property go to your hsc then click on platform then configuration in here search bar you can search that property so by default that property will be false so as this is false uh, in monitoring we have not received um, any logs okay so if you enable it you will be able to monitor your api okay so select this and if i hit the api again now it will catch in the monitor so i have hit it has been created successfully so if i go to monitor inbound as they say inbound um, object so it will you have to go to inbound if it is outbound object then you have to monitor it in outbound so you can see in inbound our um, monitor in mo uh, api monitoring uh, logs has been present so he, here you can see integration key and if you open this so you will be getting the details whether it is success or fail so if it failed and uh, the error logs will be catched here so you can uh, monitor your api in case uh, your api get failed you can monitor it from the monitoring tab in the integration ui tool so that's all for this video so in next video i will be explaining about uh, how to configure the pre persist hook uh, how to configure the what is the use of the persistent hook so we will be seeing on the next video so thanks for watching this video see you on next video